guys are ready then. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You can walk through what you did. Okay. During World War II, in order to decrypt the Enigma machine, the uh, Wombat machine was a very complex mechatronic system that is computationally intensive. So we're curious to see how we reflect the mechanical structure of that system uh, in traditional components through a PDA and how much it gets speed up over the uh, like through hardware. So there are three main objectives of this project. First is to, uh, first is to, uh, first is to build an, the Enigma machine through C and Verilog, and then we implement the Bomba in Enigma and use the FPGA to uh, compute the, some possible uh, plug board setting, like, like partially solve the plug board setting. And then at the end, we use a C function to check all the level work, plug board setting, and then decrypt the full, in, uh, like, like, like full input mess, uh, message to see if it match. Yeah. Now Kathleen will talk about how Enigma works. Oh, yeah. So um, in your, when you're encrypting a letter in Enigma, it basically goes through the keyboard, goes to a plug board, which connects like up to 10 pairs of letters. Um, and then the plug board is also reciprocal, so via something like connecting A and B, you also know B has to be connected to A. Um, then goes through three rotors, so each rotor has um, like scrambled internal wiring. And then it goes to a reflector, which connects um, pairs of letters, back through the rotors, and then back to the plug board. Um, and the plug board by far has the most number of combinations, so we're using the Bomba barely to find the plug board connections. Um, and then the bomb also takes advantage of a flaw, which is that a letter cannot be encrypted to itself. So knowing that flaw and knowing like stereotypical phrases that the Germans use, so like each message always had things like weather forecast and uh, like tile shifter or something like yeah. that. Um, so we could use that as something called a crib, which is like a piece of clear text that corresponds to like a piece of insightful text. Um, and you can kind of like slide it across the like something like letter forecast and slide it across the encrypted message and then find a place where the same letter um, does not appear twice in like both the original and encrypted message in the same position. So if you had like this, you couldn't have like T here or like H here or E here. Because um, then it would be mapping to itself. Yeah. So then using that, you can find like a position where you get like this and you know that none of the letters match. So this is like a potential um, position, like a potential mapping for your bomb machine. And then knowing that, you can draw a graph between um, each of the pairs of letters. So like a line between T and I, H and C, E and C, and then you get like a connected graph called like a menu. Um, and ideally you want like one connected graph. Uh, it's better if it has loops, but basically all you want is like a sequence of at least 12 letters. Um, and that could be inputted to the bomba because the bomba is like a bunch of connected drum banks um, and each drum bank is for like a letter encryption pair so and each drum bank has uh, like three drums each corresponding to like a rotor kind of uh, so by plugging that in to the bomba where we have 12 letters we can make assumptions about like the first mapping for the first drum bank and then deduce other mappings for the other drum banks and then look for any contradictions. Since we know that from the plug board, if you have A and B as a mapping, you can't also have A and C as another mapping. Um, and by doing that, we can find places where the bomber stops um, when there's no contradictions, and then we can manually check that to see if it matches with okay. the bombs. Yeah, so for us, regarding the bomba implementation, um, what we have right now is um, we assume we know what, which rotors are being, are being picked, um, what are the order of the rotors, and um, what are the rotors setting, and uh, what are the rotor initial position and the rotor turnover, which is the rotor notch, and also we assume we know about the reflector setting. So the only thing we're trying to deduce is um, the plug board mapping, which is pretty similar to what they have back in World War II, because um, I think for each morning, um, all of those rotor and plug, all of the rotor and reflector settings are being sent through a radio, so that um, the German side, they know how to do the configuration. And for them, the plug board is like more of like a, a monthly schedule, based, like daily schedule based in a month. So that's the part where um, we are trying to solve to like figure out what are the encrypted texts. So um, for our, the input to our Bomba is, um, is the, the crib, which is the clear, the string of clear text. And then um, we have the corresponding mapping 
like the, the encrypted crypt. And we also figure out um, the, we also record the location, um, basically the position of each of the mapping we send through the, uh, through the drum. And we're specifically using all the letters on the, on the connected chain in the menu, because this is how we're able to um, chain drum, drum and drum banks together. So we only make one assumption and try to check that, that, that assumption is correct. Um, the output of our bomba is gonna be a string of um, it's gonna be a um, it's gonna be a twelve letter message, um, which twelve is the amount of drums we're gonna have in in bomba drum banks we're gonna have in the bomba, and um, the letters in this output message maps to um, the the encrypted message input we have to um, bomba, which shows a pop, the pop we're setting we're able to figure out. Um, regarding the implementation and how our bumbo works, um, it firstly makes one assumption about what is the clip we're mapping to the first input letter. And then, um, because we know which position each of the input is in the message, um, we're able to step the rotors in each drum bank to the correct position. And that indicates um, where, um, where the, the encryption is going to happen, like which position on the rotor where the encryption would happen. And after that, we have the message going from the original text to um, the plug, uh, the, ass the assumed plug word and input plug word setting, and then have it go through all the rotors and reflectors. And the output of that part is a plug word mapping we figure out in this drum to the original input encrypted text. And um, this serves both as the output of the drum and also as an input to the next drum. Because um, on the menu, um, we, we have um, all the input letter connected. So uh, we'll plug board, the plug board setting we figure out for the first output is the same as the plug board setting for the next input. Mm -hmm. And based on that, um, each drum is going to check to see if there's a conflict happening between the plug board setting it figured out and the previous ones being found by the, the other drums. And if there is, it's going to notify the top level FSM, change um, our um, guest configuration of the uh, guest uh, plug board setting of the um, first input letter, and then um, rerun um, the entire drum bank to see to f to try for a different plug board setting based on that. And here I can show a demo okay. based on what we have. So, um, so here are because we need to like um, manually figure out the menu and the crib. So here we just um, give two examples that we know already works, which is the same as the ones on the slide. Um, do any of you want to give like a, a message you want to append to the crib? How about, is it easy to append a message? Yeah. yeah. How about go big red? Okay. So we have um, the text, um, the crib in the beginning is a tag and go big red. Oh, yeah, this is in the background. And for this case, um, our plug board setting is, um, is these, which is what we have already here. So this is a software enigma. We're using this to generate a encrypted output message okay. to the input. And we're trying to use the Bomba to figure out the original text. So here we have um, the plug board setting figured out. These indicates the mapping between letters. And then we set rotor turnover and rotor position to these, which is the set one of the setting they have back at the time. And then if we run Enigma, we're able to see this is the output message, which is the encrypted text of Enigma. Okay. And if we not this one. If we copy this back, we can see um this is the um this is what we know of this is what we know that is um the encrypted um crib of yes. Cornelithic New York. We can see it's exactly the same for this part. So we'll just take this as an input to Bomba. So right now, if I run Bomba. So this is your version of what historically, I think they use like weather report. Yes, okay. yes, it's just our version of it. Gotcha. So if I reset it, um, I, um, actually this is example, I um, I set into the to the Bomba HPS code as a default case. So I reset it, ask if it's a default case. We said yes, and we can see um, this is, this is, yeah, this is actually the um, input message chain and output message chain we can find on this plot. Okay. Yeah, so this is what we're using as an input setting to, um, for, for Bomba to do the um, decryption. And now we can see on the FPGA, ignore the eight, like um, it's being resetted. 
nothing is being used. And yes. if I type start, we see so um, the last bit um, indicates whether Bomba is done with the computation. So apparently it's not. And one means it found, it found a, a valid a mapping to the first input letter. Okay. And um, 15 indicates the mapping it found. Um, we know like 15 is n in the 15 is n in the alpha alpha bet. And we actually because um, we did the um, encryption, so we know C is actually mapped to n, and C is the first input. So like this, we we for us we know this is correct, but uh -huh. this is just indication. And now if I read the output of Bomba, we we're able to see. Um, these are the initial configurations. Um, it finds a valid mapping, but it's not done with the computation. And then we, this is our input message, output message, um, message, and this is the mapping it found. So there's a mapping between the output message and the message mapping. And this is, um, these are the plugboard settings we discovered through Bomba. Okay. Yeah. And um, if now because it's not done with computation, if we click on these, um, click on these two keys, it's actually, um, La Bomba, no, it needs to keep do the computation to find yeah. if there's another valid mapping. But here we see it reached um, 26 and um, it's done with computation, so there's no other valid mapping for this okay. we can find. But um, looking from the discovered plugboard setting, um, we know this is not all of the settings or all of the, not all the settings we configured. So. Um, this is the same as what they used to have for, for Bomba because Bomba is a el el elimination machi machine. Right. It eliminates all of the wrong answers, but it, um, at that time they need to manually check to see um, the rest of the mappings to figure out the correct one. So we implement this part in software. Um, Robbie can explain how this part works. Yeah. So once we have, uh, like, like once we have this part. Then we basically have a small script. At, like I also have a version here that basically takes like a message, and then it will convert to whatever is, is not mapped yet into a string. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then and then so we so with that on that so with that unmatched array, we use a recursive function to try the uh, like to try all the possible metrics. So as you can see, this is like a tree structure. So uh, I also. So I will just draw it out to demonstrate actually. So for example, if you have uh, five letters uh -huh. that are unmatched yet, uh, we put it, so we use a string of, uh, with five index and then label them as like zero, one, two, three, four. And now, and in this string, we have these labels. Um, before we search into it, they will be all labeled zero. So if we are finding so so uh, so due to the plugboard uh, characteristic of the bomba, we need to find unique non-overlapping pairs, right? So if we if we are finding two pairs in this five, uh, five unmatched uh, plugboard settings, um, we will have a recursive of two level, right? Like our. So for example, we will go find a zero one first, and then at this point at this level. This will be labeled one and one because it's already taken. This ensure that uh, every time we uh, find a pair, it's unique and it's not repeating. Uh, so in the second level, uh, it will go through two and three first because the, the because those will be the uh, next two that's ungrabbed. And after it explore this, every single time it does this, it it checks to see if the like it inputs back to Enigma to see if the message uh, matches the crib. And then uh, in this level, right? Like when it's not matched, then we just uh, keep searching. Like when this is uh, not found, then we set it back to zero and then grab the next one. We just, uh, we just uh, increment i and j in a way that uh, we can always find unique and non-overlapping non pairs in the Enigma setting. And um, like in the plugboard setting, uh, and the complexity of this, like for example, if we have uh, five unmatched, uh, sorry, like if we have five unmatched uh, plugboard uh, letters, and then we're finding two unique pairs, this is the complexity function. Yeah. So this is the number of pairs. And uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is the number of uh, 
uh, like this is the total number of uh, how much letter? How much letter? And then P is the number of unique pairs. For example, if if it's uh two pairs and five unmatched letter, it will be fifteen. Yeah. So, so I can write it. I can explain this um, algorithm against uh, complexity. So it's basically n n minus two p. So what this algorithm does is that we have n letters, and because we want p pairs, we're actually grabbing 2p letters from the bucket of n letters. So this gives us the complexity of that. And because we have p pairs, we don't care about um, the... We, because we have p pairs, we don't care about the order between the pairs. So that's why we divide it by the factorial of p. And this 2 to the p is actually indicating that in each of the pair, we don't care about the ordering of the two letters. So this is how the calculation goes. Okay. And now let's try to feed our um, Bomba output into our software Bomba checker. So we know the mapping is from the output message to message mapping. So I'll copy this over. Mm. Message mapping. And we know our original crib. Um, this is our, uh, this is our original, this is our original crib. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's here already. And this is the corresponding encrypted message of the crypt for this specific Enigma setting. And we know um, we found um, we received a encrypted letter, and this is we, what we want to um, convert back to original text. So um, with the setting, if I run Bomber Checker. It will iterate through, as Robbie said, iterate through, recursively iterate through all possible map pairs it is able to find. So we know from, um, it is, so it first figure out um, it has three unique pairing found in this message out, in the Bomba output. And it knows there's a total of six unique pairs, so it knows it needs to find three pairs out of the 13 unchecked letters. And for this setting, this is the pair, pairing it found. And we can see this is actually exactly the same as our input. Yeah. And okay. here is the decrypted message. And go big red. Go big red. Yes. And then this is the first um, correct setting it found. And it asks, asks the user if we want to continue. And if we say yes, it finished checking all of them. So this, this, this is the only setting that can um, encrypt, uh, that can encrypt the curve to our um, in our input of the encrypted letter. So if there were multiple stecker settings that would both <laughs> yield the correct crib, it would give you all the possible stecker settings yeah, so that you could check? Yeah, and then the user can manually check to see if it's is like it an actual sentence. Is it nonsense or is it English? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I would say the total number of pairs is also shown. Yeah. So it, it found those settings, the FPGA, I mean, mm -hmm. really quickly. Yes. Um, it's actually extremely quick. Do you have a uh, do you happen to have a measure of how quickly? Um, I don't. I honestly don't remember. Seems like less than a second. Yes. At least for each of those. It's like uh, I would say a few thousand seconds. Wow. Because we because um even though like these twelve drums are operating sequentially, yeah. the al the only sequential step is actually the wrong step. Okay. Or um, before that, we have the initialization and we have the stepping step. Yeah. The stepping step, um, those two are done in parallel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the real bomb, uh, like, 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 like for the FPGA part, it takes about 20 minutes. Uh huh. And then for this part, they like manually like do it. The real bomb back in World War II. It's yes. like yeah. 20 yes. to 25 minutes. To, to do what the FPGA did, yeah. you mean? Yes. Okay. So 80 years later. 80 years later. It's fractions of a second. Faster. Yeah. Yeah, because the the state machine implemented on the FPGA that's there's that's rotating these sort of um, emulated yeah. drums. Yeah. yeah, is that running at f how fast is that running? Fifty megahertz. Fifty megahertz. And the original I think was what? I can't remember offhand. It was hertz. I think it was under a hundred hertz. Yeah. 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 Wow. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. We have another input setting you can play around with if you want. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm going to stop recording. Thank Thanks. You